So we've probably all been there. You're in the bathroom, you go to flush the toilet. And you're noticing you have a clog and the water is continuing to rise. So the question is, what do you do? And how do you get out of the situation? Let me show you three simple steps so you don't make this into a much bigger problem. So the first thing you need to consider is if the water level is well above the normal level in the bowl, and maybe you have some other stuff floating around in there, probably not as friendly as this little guy, it's very important that you do not flush again. I know if the water goes down a little bit, you wanna roll the dice, you don't see a plunger, you wanna see if one more flush will unclog it. Well, that is where you get yourself in trouble and that's where you can have things overflowing and cause a much, much larger issue. So don't roll those dice. Do not flush again if the water level in the bowl is higher than normal and it's time to unclog. So if you don't have a plunger, and at the end, I'll show you a simple little hack that might get it on the clock with just a few different products you'll have around the house. And the second thing to note is you have kind of a two-phase attack here. If you do flush again, or for whatever reason, the water level is rising, and that is the initial volume from your tank is going to flush into the bowl. And if there's a clog, obviously that's gonna start filling it up. In this case, that's about 1.6 gallons. And the second phase attack is when that tank starts to fill up again, you are also going to be putting water into the bowl. So you get that initial rush of 1.6 gallons, and then that's why the level keeps filling, because during the fill process of the tank, more water is coming in the bowl. So for number two, what you'll do is you'll need to turn off the water immediately. So let me demonstrate that on this toilet. So that's that 1.6 gallons going in. Now, once that's done, you'll see it's gonna to continue to rise up. So what I'll do is I'll turn off the water here, which is usually located on the left-hand side and is either a quarter turn, like the one I have, which I prefer, or a multi-turn. In this scenario, okay, now we've stopped. We do not have additional water going into the bowl, but let's talk about number three, and that is you do not have a valve or the valve isn't working. So this third scenario is good to know ahead of actually needing to use it. So for the third scenario, we know we can't shut the water valve off because there isn't one or it's not functioning correctly. So what do you do? Well, let's walk through that scenario and I'll show you exactly what I do to get that water stopped and avoid water going all over your floor. So in this scenario, I'm going to flush the toilet and then immediately take off the tank cover. So in this scenario, what I would do is just lift up on the float to cut off the water supply. Now you can pin something underneath this float arm and that will keep it in that position so it will not turn the water back on. But if you see the flapper is down and the flapper is sealing off where it's actually holding water in the tank, here's actually what I do. I just take this fill hose or refill tube that goes into the overflow pipe. And I just take that off and I direct that into the tank. So I'll let the float down. I'll... So now both the valve on the lower end is filling the tank and also this tube is filling the tank and not putting additional water into the bowl of the toilet, which would be your problem. So it's no problem to fill this tank up and just let the float naturally come up to turn off the water. So now the tank is full, but we've stopped all the filling of the bowl and now we can unclog the actual toilet and get the water flushing through. Now you should be using a plunger to get that unclogged, but if you don't have a plunger, what you can use is some simple dish soap, let that sit and then flush it with hot water, which can unclog that without the need of a plunger. And we'll actually try it on in this clog and see if it works. So I'm gonna dump in a generous portion of this dish soap, and especially this Clorox, which I don't think is nearly as good as like a concentrated Dawn dish soap. And then over time, it will settle as the water slowly drains out of the bowl, even with the clog in there. 
It usually takes about an hour or so, just depending on the clog, to drain the rest of that water through the bowl. Most clogs will let some water slowly drain through. And the nice thing is that soap's gonna settle in and it will slowly also drain in and around that clog, hopefully helping to loosen things up or at least increase the likelihood of that clog slipping through the trap in the toilet. So next step, once that water level has lowered, so we only have a little bit of cold water in there, I am gonna pour in that one and a half gallons or even two gallons of hot water to help loosen things up and hopefully that will flush the clog through. Now you can just use hot tap water, which would be around 120 or 125 degrees Fahrenheit, or you can heat up a pot like I did up to about 145 degrees Fahrenheit just to give you a little bit more of a chance of that clog loosening up and going through. So let's try it out. I do try to dump it in fairly quickly to move around that cold water at the bottom, hopefully getting the hot water to go right on that clog. Sometimes this works on the first try, or you might have to do multiple tries, but this time it actually worked and our clog did work its way out. So if you didn't have a plunger, hopefully that dish soap hack can help get that clog undone. And you can do multiple cycles to see if it works, or just run down to the home improvement store, grab yourself a plunger, and the dish soap actually should make the plunging job a little easier. Now don't forget, if you guys wanna help support the channel, you'll see a link at the top of the description to our Amazon store that has a complete list of all my favorite tools that I found over the years of working on my rental properties, working on my house, and doing these videos on this channel. They have the right mix of value, functionality, and durability for DIYers, and it's always updated as I find new tools that I think would be a good fit for you. Now, if you were having issues with your water shutoff valve or you did not have one running to your toilet, you can check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the complete process of installing a new compression fitting shutoff valve, which will be a nice little upgrade to your home. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.